Set to go. Ooh, and it works loud and clear. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for sticking through the end of the day here. I uh, truly appreciate it. My name is Nathan Pendleton. I'm with SAP. And in, with me on this presentation will be Benay Singh from Verizon. SAP and Verizon are business partners. I'll take you through some of this technology that SAP provides and Verizon as our partner to help us bring it to market as well. This talk is called Powerful Answers to Empower Mobile Innovation. And mobile innovation, I like to think of as a really active ocean. You know, this is a picture actually of the Bering Strait with big waves and crashing white caps and wind and pretty ominous looking. And then when you layer on top of that, all of these acronyms, things that are going on in the mobile world and enterprise mobility, I'm sure many of you have either read or worried about a lot of these things that are on here. The BYOD, very popular, and banking, authentication, tablets, iPads, phones. Lots of things to worry about, lots of things to consider. But there's a reason why that all that stuff is happening. There are undeniable business benefits that are driving this mobile wave. This was some market research done by IDG, um, sponsored by Unisys, and it was done a year ago. They identified 400 companies that qualified themselves as mobile trendsetters. They had implemented mobile, they were at the forefront of the implementing mobile in their businesses, and they talked to them about what were their experiences, what did they get as ben benefits. And you can see here, 84% of those companies claimed that they got productivity gains from their employees, working with partners, big productivity gains. 74% or three quarters of those companies also got revenue gains. So business benefits driving the top line as well as driving the bottom line. So if you're running a business, key things you want to worry about. This talk is designed to give you a framework, a framework for how you can think through the mobile innovation, the key elements to consider, and of course, we'll provide you with some of those solutions, powerful solutions to these situations, to these topics. We'll break it down into six parts. The first three will be dealing with security, securing your device, securing your application, securing your content. We'll then talk about applications, both the creation of applications through an application development platform, as well as mobile applications that could be provided by third parties or other people besides your own team. And then lastly, we'll talk about ways that you can consume mobility. It doesn't just have to be running on your data, in your data center on your on-premise location. It can be consumed via the cloud in a managed hosted service. And that's when Vinay will come up and talk to us about the Verizon component. So let's uh, drop in here to mobile devices and the security of mobile devices. Mobile device management, key buzzword, table stakes for getting in the mobile game. You need to be able to manage your device, you need to be able to secure your content, secure your device as well. Lots of different things to consider here in terms of both configuring your device for deployment out, in, for configuring it for your users, deploying it out to those users, and then maintaining it while they're, while they're using the device. A Couple of things that I'd like to highlight here. So the set and deploy group policies Within our solution, you can actually identify groups of users or groups of devices and establish certain policies that might be relevant for those users or for those devices. Policies could be, what type of security do I want to have? Is there a password requirement when I power on the device? Or does the password need to be a minimum of four characters or characters and alphas and, and special symbols or setting those types of security parameters? Does the password need to be refreshed every six months or three months or whatever the proper time frame is for your business and that group of users. Throughout the use of the device, you want to monitor and update that device. Is it running the most current operating system? Are you, are you aware of how the device is being used? We can track all elements of what's happening with that device, where it is, um, what applications are running, how often are those applications running. So you can monitor and you can update that. Uh, make sure they're updated to the most current OS. The usability of this solution is very important for our users as a number of self-service administrator and user portals. And 
ultimately here at the bottom right corner, everybody's most feared situation. What happens if the device is lost or worse, stolen? How do you protect that? How do you protect the data on the device? Well, simple things is you can just lock it. You can go to the extremes as well as wiping it. The remote lock wipe solution, getting rid of everything. There's some additional elements that are available within our mobile device management solution. These are benefits that really help the administrative department. So tying the mobile device and the applications together with certificates, managing each of those individually is very complicated. With our MDM solution, you can put it into a common repository. You can manage those elements so that you can install them, track them, renew them, keep the licenses current, and handle that in one simple place. Again, very, very helpful in the ease of administration. Likewise, integrating with the Active Directory. Many companies will use AD as a way to manage their users. And so with this solution, it integrates into that. So the changes you make in Active Directory ripple through your Afaria. The solution's called Afaria. The Afaria solution for mobile device management. And then lastly, here on the email access and control, if a device goes out of compliance, they no longer have the right passwords or they're no longer on the right version of the operating system or application, you might not want them to receive the emails that have corporate data on it. So you can prevent those emails from being distributed until that device comes back into compliance. And then when it does, have them sent, uh, get the, all of the emails that they missed. So again, helps, helps the administer, administrator maintain the compliance and it helps them reduce those support calls when all of a sudden the emails aren't there, you can explain why, and then tell them to get back in compliance and then they're ready for them again. SAP uses our own solution, SAP runs SAP. We have over 20,000 devices being managed by these, uh, this Afaria solution and um, tablets, iPhones, Samsung Android devices, different types of Android devices. The ne next uh, section of this talk is about securing the application. And SAP has partnered with another company called Mokana. Mokana provides our technology for this. So this is a combination Mokana, SAP, Verizon component of the talk. Let me tee this up a little bit. There was some market research that was done that said there will be $11.5 billion spent on enterprise applications this year, 2014. That's a lot of enterprise apps. Of those apps, two-thirds of them, of, sorry, of those companies implementing enterprise apps, two-thirds of those companies will be implementing five or more applications. So it's not just a, we'll try one and test it. You'll start with five. 20% of those companies are actually going to be implementing 20 apps, jumping in with both feet, really getting involved. So applications are, are going to be extremely important for these companies to mobilize their business. The problem gets a little bit more complicated because the applications can be built both by the company that's going to deploy them, but half of those are also going to be coming from third-party companies. So companies that you don't know who wrote the source code, you don't know what's actually involved with it. So you've got applications that are internally made and externally provided. And to get the business benefit, you want to have this go to your employees with their managed device, but also to perhaps other third parties contractors, resellers, distributors, people that you work with in your ecosystem, you want to have them as well, but they're gonna have unmanaged devices. So how do you do that? How do you get the business benefit of running the mobile application, but giving it to managed and unmanaged devices with applications that you made and were provided to you? So the solution we have, we call it app wrapping, application wrapping. And very simply, this takes an existing application and without needing to know any security expertise or needing to know any element of coding, you take that same application and you wrap it. You give it a layer of security and a layer of management around it that then creates a container that gets delivered to the mobile device. I'll show you in the next slide just how simple and easy it is to, to get to that stage. Where is this going to be important? In industries where there's strict regulations for security or for compliance and auditability, so healthcare, banking and finance, segments of government, 
It's going to be important for companies that want to get the benefits of mobility and to speed that initiative. So because you don't have to make a special secure version of your app, you can take the current app, wrap it and deploy it, you get, to get, to get, that, you get that benefit right away. And increasing the flexibility, again, it's being able to deliver to other people within the, your world that need to use the app, not just employees, but your contractors, your resellers, et cetera, where you want them to be able to use the app as well. So to get there, very straightforward. The administrator in IT or your line of business administrator can work with your Android or your iOS app, take that application, move it into the, the web console, choose the policies that you wish. Here's a, a sampling of some that you could choose from and some that are checked. Enhanced encryption with FIPS and with DAR, data wipe, no geofencing, for example. Click the button that says wrap, and one minute later you've got your secure application. That is then a container that you can distribute down to the mobile device. It's either an IPA or an APK file. The user receives it just like they would any other downloaded application. It installs onto their mobile device, and it's used just like any other application. No special requirement for security needed on the user side. No special security knowledge or coding needing on the administrator side either. So to summarize some of those benefits, the IT department gets the benefits of protecting the corporate data. You're accelerating that adoption because you can get that, um, get that wrapping done right away. And you're having a standardized approach for how your security is being deployed. The line of business person, the one that actually wants to see the business benefits of the mobile application, they're benefiting because they're no longer worrying about having to create a special secure version of the app. It's there available for them right away. And the user experience is the same as it would be with an, the, the, the original application. And lastly, the user, again, they're not worrying about special security requirements. They're using the app just like they, they would and they're focusing on their core business. So that takes us to the third section of, of our security topic, which is securing content. So many in the mobile world are very worried about people have access to all of my corporate information. How do I make sure that it is being protected, it's being secured, and I'm, I'm going to be enabling, still enabling that mobile workforce? So our solution here is mobile docs, mobile documents, and very valuable where there's collaboration needed between team members or between multiple companies. And of course, you want to control and, and have secure distribution of that content. It's used in a couple of different scenarios. You can see on the left-hand side, my files, any device. This is just a very convenient and easy way to distribute your information between your desktop slash laptop to your own mobile phone or your own tablet as a way just to um, distribute it quickly without having to email yourselves large files. And it maintains, for the IT department, it maintains that security so that when it is on my mobile device, it is a secure document. Similarly, I can use this as a way to, mobile docs will connect to the document management systems. I can use it as a way to find information and find content that's corporate content. I can access it, deploy it to my tablet, again, in a secured fashion. And likewise with sharing files, with the collaboration across team members, where you are distributing uh, documents amongst teammates, colleagues, and being able to just share that information in a secure fashion. SCP also uses mobile documents, as you might expect, and you can see some of the, the statistics here with 11,000 different SAP devices, 25,000 users, a lot of traffic, 125,000 documents a day, there's about 68,000 people at SAP, so um, we're all quite busy reading documents, apparently. Um, integrates nicely with Outlook, so you can see that uh, this is a, an effective solution that we use at SAP as a way to keep track of and to secure and to share our, our content. So the first part here, when I talked about security, I think of this as you know, kind of the, the bare level requirements as you embark on your mobile innovation journey. You want to secure, you want to be able to manage your content, you want to have that confidence that it's, you're not going to have the leakage of information from your company. 
Our experience is that mobilization in companies get the best benefit when they start to look at applications. That the business transformation occurs when they have applications that are solving true business needs and um, can have uh, top line benefits or significant cost saving benefits. So that will happen in the application space. So we'll talk about how you create applications and platforms available for doing that and why a platform is, is a necessity. And then also a little bit about applications themselves. This, if in case you can't tell, is the iceberg chart. 20% of the issues are visible above the line, 80% are visible below the line. Um, the visible part when you, when you embark on creating a mobile application is things that you think of, what devices do I run on? What OS do I use? What, is it a tablet or a phone? Is it iOS? Is it an Android? Is it both? And what's the user experience? What does that UX look like? How does the user interact with it? All very important things and certainly things that need to be, cons to be dealt with. But there's another whole suite of issues that need to be considered when you start mobilizing enterprise apps or you start to have a creation of multiple applications. Things such as authentication. Most typically, there'll be a connection into an LDAP server. Well, what happens if you need to have a single sign-on or a certificate, a certificate handling? Other elements of authentication that are needed. Security, we talked about security already in terms of content and devices and the data transmission. Security at rest as well as security in transit. Offline access. What happens if your mobile worker doesn't have access to uh, an LTE network? Can they still do productive work while that device is offline? Multi-platform support. The first application that one writes is typically straightforward. It's for a device on an, an, app, an operating system. Well, when that operating system revs, there needs to be work done. Or if you expand that out into different form factors or expand it to different operating systems, Platforms uh, become very important in that scenario as it eases that transition. Lots of other elements here, push notifications. If you want your application to be able to receive data, have it pushed to it from the enterprise itself, um, having that capability in there. And then reporting and analytics. Is the application being used? It was supposed to have business benefit. Are you getting that? Who's using it? What devices? What's the access time? How frequent? Gives you some metrics and some analysis to be able to make sure that you're getting the business benefit you expected. I see a camera coming up. The solution that uh, we have at SAP, we call it the SAP mobile platform. And through Verizon, that same technology is packaged as the mobile services enablement platform, which is a mouthful, so it gets shortened to be MSEP. Within the platform, lots of different technologies available, a few that I'd like to highlight here. The platform is there to help you as developers build multiple types of applications. These could be the B2Es, business to employees, the business to business apps, or the B2C, business to consumer, business to citizens. We embrace an open and standards-based technology uh, framework. I'll talk about that or show you a slide on that in a sec. We have SDK, software development kits, that enable the developer to get started quickly. It has, is loaded with services and with um, lots of different tools. You can create multiple types of applications. It could be your standard mobile web app, so an HTML framework type of an application that will just access the web in a, in a mobile framework. Or it could be the native application that runs on the device, taking advantage of the functionality and features of the specific device. Maybe it's a barcode scanner that's built into the mobile device, or it's your camera, or it could be taking advantage of the GPS location information. Na those are native devices. The hybrid, of course, is the combination of the both. We also have a metadata capability where you can use basically a forms-based application where your, where your app on the device is being populated with information or data coming from your back-end enterprise system in a metadata uh, in example. And not so much an issue here in California, but in many parts of the world where, where the feature phone is still the predominant mobile device, applications really need to be text-based because they're using SMS as their primary way to get information in and out of the device. So the platform allows you to build all of those different types of applications, all of the popular operating systems, Windows, iOS, Android, 
and then provides the offline capability. So offline is interesting in that many uh, solutions will think of offline as well, I've cached the data so I can have access or make it visible to me. What we implement is actually a small database that resides on the device. So when there is no online access, you can still interact with the app, you can manipulate the data, you can change the data, you can store the data, you can do useful work. And then when you are back online, a powerful synchronization engine kicks in and syncs all of the content back and forth between your back and enterprise systems and the application on the device. Application services, going down the bottom line here, application services and platform services exist, app services such as how do I authenticate and log on? How do I um, start with a, a simple encryption method or screen settings that are already pre-populated and available? Platform services, how do I connect to a web services API or how do I connect to a database? It's an SAP database or, or back-end agnostic. It could be to other systems as well, Oracle or IBM or other types of databases that might be out there. We provide the tools to help not just build your first app, but to manage it. Create the revisions, deploy those out, do your change management control, and eventually at some point do the, the life cycle sunset of that application as it rolls into a new version. And then analytics and reporting, I think I mentioned that already. The tools are available there to help you make sure you're getting the business benefits from the application that you've created. For the technologists in the house, here are some of the open standards, open source technologies that we embrace and that we use. Um, HTML5, has meant, I've mentioned before, and then the Apache Cordova. We actually have a, a number of plugins already available with Apache Cordova that can be um, implemented and used right away. Okay, so the next section here is talking about the apps themselves. So the previous one was the platform to help you create an application, embark on that journey. Perhaps there is something already available through the ecosystem or your third parties or other companies that have made applications. SAP has hundreds of applications. I'm not going to take you through them, but rather what I'd like to do is provide you a framework for thinking about what's important and how might I be able to group my user needs into the different types of applications that we have. So primarily, you start with the user. What is it that you want them to do? What is it the business need that you have? And what are the capabilities and the implementation approaches that are gonna be appropriate for them? So the first grouping I'd like to bring out is the field worker. So these are the individuals that spend their day not in the office, they're out in the field. It could be a salesperson, or more commonly it's a field technician, such as this gentleman here working on a, on, on a network switch, doing some type of repair or installation. Their days are being guided by the tablet in front of them that tells them what I need to work on and what my work schedule looks like, and making sure that they've got in the truck the right parts that they need, and they've got the right scheduling. We have seen companies get the best business bang for the buck with this type of an implementation. It's business transformative. They can create um, significant, high potential to create significant business change and benefit for the field worker. The um, example that I like is actually a very, you know, it's a personal example where our fridge broke. And so somebody had to come out to repair my refrigerator. So they came out there and they, as expected, had the parts that they thought they would need, but he discovered the problem was actually something different. Fortunately, he had the parts, but he didn't know how to fix it. So he had on his iPad, actually it wasn't the iPad, it was a ruggedized Android device, he had instructions to walk him through how to make that repair while he was there. So it was a benefit for that company because they were able to not have to send out somebody that was skilled in that specific repair, but he could do on-the-job training and fix it while he was there. And at the end of that call, he said, I've noticed your water filter is, hasn't been changed in over a year. This is for your ice cube maker and for your, you know, your water dispenser. I've got some in my truck. Would you like to buy one? It's like, well, yeah, I guess so. If all it will take is a twist of the wrist to take one out and another one to put it in. I've never even thought about that. So, the company had an upsell opportunity and very conveniently increased their top line as well on that one call. So again, a business transformative way of, of, uh, of an example here. Another example is a customer of ours, Penn State. This is the university where they actually 
have uh, utilized our work manager and our inventory manager products. And as the name implies, it helps them keep track of their work schedule throughout the day and throughout the week in terms of maintaining all of the physical buildings at the university. So whether it be planned maintenance or unplanned emergency repairs, they utilize our software to help control that, that uh, physical plant of the university. The second grouping that we talk about is the knowledge worker. And this is, these are the employees or managers in the company. And what we've seen here is that it becomes a very um, employee satisfaction benefit as well as a, a efficiency benefit. Now, these tend to be casual use, um, what we call the, uh, the uh, request and approval workflow applications. So it could be travel requests or it could be I want, need a, a purchase requisition request. And then it goes through the chain of command for approvals all the way through. So these are being done occasionally, but they're being done on the mobile device. So the employee is satisfied. They can do that when and where they want. The managers are happy. They can approve it wherever they are on their mobile device. But when you start looking, and there's efficiency for each of those transactions, and when you cross that out uh, put across all of the different employees, there starts to be some significant efficiency gains for, for the corporation. So another example here is the Hampshire County Council. They utilize a set of applications from SAP called Fiori applications, which again are the, the trip requests and the leave approvals purchase requests, and also lookup applications, looking up um, benefits that they might have, looking up the organizational hierarchy or a contact list. And they've reported they have benefits in being employee productivity increases, management productivity increases, and overall lower operating costs through implementing that. And the last group here we'll talk about is the consumers and the citizens. So connecting with the customers, the expectations that these individuals have, I mean, it's all of us in the room. We are very familiar with consumer grade user experience of applications, whether it be on your Android or your iPhone, whether it be a game or something uh, more um, business oriented. So the expectations are high regarding the ease of use. And there's going to be multiple channels of reaching them, mobile being one of them. And the companies that implement this are really looking for ways to connect with their constituents, whether it be citizens or whether it be consumers. And there is potential to potentially drive some revenue, um, but the key element here is, is the connection and through that to be able to drive repeatability and engagement with, the, with that group of audience. We had a very early customer, BBVA Compass, a bank in the Midwest that implemented our mobile banking solution. So this is a B2C mobile banking. And they wanted to reach the widest range of individuals. And at the time, uh, it wasn't everybody that had a smartphone in their pocket. There was still a lot of texting and feature phones. So they used our platform and they created the, the business banking solution that allowed them to do both a web-based app as well as a text-based app for their business bank, for their banking consumers. They can transfer money between different accounts, they can check balances, they can make payments, and this is a way that they could do this all within their mo with using their mobile phone. We're now at the point where we're no longer really talking about products and technology, but rather talking about how this can be consumed. How can you use it in a very simple to get started, efficient way, and an OPEX friendly method using a managed hosted service. And Renee? Thanks, Nevin. So, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Renee, I'm the enterprise architect for Work with Verizon. And um, what we offer, what Nathan has mentioned in terms of application development and security is all um, offered as a service model from Verizon. And also, you know, we'll talk about some of the contracts that we have in place um, with what the state agencies to procure these services as well. So, uh, quickly diving into this, um, we talked about mobile application, uh, the security aspects, and converting all those into an OPEX model, that's where Verizon comes into the, into the picture. We host it on our data centers where we do not store any state data or any information but it's all um, on an OPEX model based. 
So some of the uh, key security and uh, mobile device management functionality that we have in place, we have about close to 20 plus scale agencies that are available that are already on production one and on MDM. Um, with about 2,000 plus devices that are being deployed by different state agencies. Um, we usually go through a environment where we focus on business requirements, not technology. Technology they keep ch it keeps changing. So what we being having local presence over here, we go talk to the state agencies and talk sit down and have a discussion. What are you trying to talk? What are your business requirements? And from there we start creating a solution. We have a huge um, team behind the service that we that we offer, which basically walks you through step by step. So we have pro program management office, we have a service delivery team, and then we have uh, engineering team in the front end, which is collecting your requirements, your business ch challenges, and then handing handing that over to the service delivery team for the implementation side of it. So the expectation is that. You don't necessarily have to have the technical knowledge to implement. We do that for you, and then hand you back the keys to the car, say, okay, you can drive from here now. That way, it gives you time to get up and running, be compliant, deploy the devices, and then start changing the policies as you go. So um, one of the key aspects, and we've been working with OTEC for almost uh, 18 months before we put this in place, um, the service in place, and we had to go through some rigorous testing in terms of how this integrates, especially with the email platforms, knowing that the state has CML, CES, um, and some of the agencies that are exempt um, also have exchange services on premise, uh, like State Treasury's office. So we had to work with OTEC to make sure when, when uh, an MDM platform works and integrates with all email platforms. Um, so what, right now we have all different flavors of the email uh, access with different agencies that they're using to make sure that there's no issues over there. One of the key requirements of the, um, uh, from OTEC and the state was that we need to, we need something that is a, a containerized model and it is a FIPS 140 certified. There's a huge difference between FIPS compliance and FIPS certified. FIPS compliance means you're not, you don't necessarily need to follow, but you are just saying your compliance. But versus certification is, we absolutely have to follow the strict guidelines to be certified. Um, and so we use NitroDesk as a containerized model um, and then wrap it with Mokana's application wrapping to make it a FIPS 140-2 uh, certified client. So, Nirna, you talked about, again, the MCEP uh, platform. Again, all those services, we are offering that as a platform, as a service, um, or professional services if there's a need for, if you have a business requirement in mind and you, you want the end goal, we have the resources. Or if you have the resources, you don't have to spend the procurement of hardware, licenses, and servers to build the application. And when you build the application, you have the option to distribute it Develop once, distribute across operating systems, Android, iOS, and Windows. So th these are some of the core f uh, features that we offer with the uh, contract with the state we have in place. Um, it's a hosted solution, which means we don't store any data uh, in any shape or form. It's managed by the state agencies. It integrates with Exchange Active Sync, both hosted on-premise and CES, uh, the CES, CML, and on-premise Exchange Server. Um, it the client, you have the option to manage the devices. You can delegate the management of the devices to the end users, or you can manage it at a central location. You have both these both these options, and obviously we have the 140-2 email client, and usually the the process of um, is the process starts with education of what does what uh, what is the MDM consists of what are what are the features and functionalities so we go on site or WebEx we do a training of what are the uh, uh, functionalities and features available for the state agencies either be it on premise um, or WebEx either is fine 
And as part of that, we developed the business requirements. So we, we also, because have, we have implemented with 20 other agencies, we have the option to brainstorm, hey, what is, what is DHCS, what, is, what are they doing? Or what is Department of Social Services doing? Or you know, we can always collaborate on those. And once the trial environment is done and you decide to move to a production environment, the process is submitting a form which goes to OTEC and it converts your environment to production. It's as simple as that. It's no, there's no delays in converting a trial to a production environment. Here's the uh, site, which is a service catalog uh, that's available on OTEC's website. And you have, um, if you have or any further questions on the process, Eric is the contact at um, OTEC. Uh, again, the contract holder is only OTEC. There's no. Um, from a, it, it, made, uh, it, it makes sense for, uh, from a billing standpoint, from an administration standpoint, to have one single point of vendor rather than having, uh, trying to establish 300 different uh, agreements with different agencies. So OTEC is only a customer of record for the contract. Everything else is directly between. So if you have a problem with the device or functionalities, you pick up the phone and call Verizon 24 by 7 help desk, not OTEC. OTEC. Um, you work with Verizon directly again, and then we um, hand you over the logins. The training happens after once the enrollment process is completed, and there's there's a clear delineation between what OTEC does and what Verizon does in terms of features and functionalities. Um, Hallmark is one of our uh, recent customers um, where they have included application development and mobile device management. Um, another vendor, uh, satellite vendor, recently migrated to um, us. One of the key differentiators uh, out there is basically, wow, what's the value? What value are you bringing to us? How does it make, how does it impact me, or how does it impact my agency? The value and differentiator is, there's so much technic technology and technical aspects that are out there on MDM because it's an evolving process, it is important for someone to have presence local here in Sacramento, have the ability to relate and understand what, how does the state agency operate? How, what are the key pieces of, okay, where is the email? How is it hosted? Um, we also have the Verizon CGEN network that is managed by, uh, provided to other state agencies. How can that be leveraged and integrated into the MDM solution? So the value is when you put together all these different criteria of why and where, you get the answer to that. Um, with that, I am more than happy to answer any, any questions that anyone has. Hi, group. So um, <laughs> just to summarize, so SAP and Verizon, and with Mukana as well, we have these solutions. All of the material that I provided in our presentation, the beginning of the presentation, is available through Verizon, uh, will be available, in some cases with respect to the applications, will be available as a managed hosted service. So happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have on any of this, sir. Can you talk about the licensing of the MSC? So the licensing of the application works in two different ways. One is if it's a B2C or a B2E. If it's, if it's for your internal employees, there's a different licensing model. And if it's a business to end consumers, it's a different licensing model. So for business to employees, it's unlimited licenses once you buy the enterprise license. But for business to consumer, it's based on per user who downloads or uses the application. And I think the other thing to note, uh, Vinay, is that with respect to the Verizon offering, it is a subscription-based license, Correct. is it not? Correct. So it's a subscription-based license where you, you purchase the license as and when you need it. And when you are done, you can turn in the licenses and our, that subscription basically ends over there. As that's Verizon services, right? I'm talking about the SAP. So with the SAP, the mobile platform is licensed as an on-premise uh, platform and it is, um, has a number of users that can be attached to it. So as an on, you can have it as an on-prem license, or, and that's a capital expenditure typically, or you can work with the Verizon as an operating expense where you're being charged on a per user per month basis.
Any other questions? Fiori? Okay, there's a there, there is a, a, a Fiori and an Afaria. I'm not sure how we come up with these names. So the Afaria product is the mobile device management solution that was described here. Fiori is a suite of applications. It's actually an application um, concept that has a very consistent user look and feel and UX experience for mobilizing SAP enterprise users. So all of the examples that I have mentioned with the, uh, the county council in terms of their lookup applications or their um, workflow applications for travel requests, travel approvals, or purchase order requests and approvals, those are all under the umbrella of the Fiori application. So you would need both. Uh, you will need the Fiori to connect it to the SAP applications. It turns out Fiori is actually free when you just use it connected as an online application for the SAP backend. If you want to have offline access and push notification, you would connect Fiori through the mobile platform, and that would be a, a new software license. I'd be happy to, to talk to you further about anything else that you want on the details of that. If there are no other questions, as the slide says, we would like to thank you for your time this afternoon. We are all, we'll come to SAP Verizon, are all over the Verizon's booth here at 16 and 17, right? So thank you very much for your time.